Well, good morning, everyone. How are you? Oh, <laughs> you're very much alive. That's great to see. <laughs> Lovely to be together yet again in the house of the Lord and to be able to be here with our brothers and sisters in Christ and to, and to worship God. Um, we're grateful for any visitors that we see or people who are new today too. You're very welcome. And uh, we hope that you'll feel comfortable amongst us today and stay for morning tea afterwards so we can have a chance to get to know you even better. Right, I'd also like to say um, hello to everyone who's watching online because uh, our service is streaming as usual today and so we'd like to welcome them as well too. Even though we can't see you, um, it's good to have you uh, signed in as well. Thank you. Well, at the moment, I'm just going to... Um, Pardon me, I, I, it's just that I picked up one of the wrong pieces of paper and that's just really thrown me. But that's okay, that's okay, we rise above these things. Um, we're in our um, call to worship this morning. We're going to be reading from Psalm 27, 20, verse 1, and I'll just get this out. Apologies for this. It's a beautiful psalm and um, very succinct and we're just going to be reading the first verse which really focuses on, on the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Thank you. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, you have um, given us great joy today to meet with you, together with your people. And as we give you thanks, basically for who you are, we thank you that you want to meet us and meet with us your needy children. As the blind man didn't hesitate in letting Jesus know his needs, may we also learn to go straight to you first to express our needs as part of our worship of you. Thank you. Now we're going to continue in worship today with a, a bracket of three songs. So um, as is our normal custom, please um, stand as you're able, but if that's not good for you physically, you would, please feel comfortable remaining seated. So the first one we'll be singing is um, The Blind Man Sat by the Road as he cried. Thank you. 
Jesus. Jesus. I have not made not, not know this one, but the chorus is easy. You can join with the chorus. The chorus is, do you know God loves you? Twice, that's it.
this is a Chris Tomlin one. to introduce our drummer here. <laughs> this, is, this is Gary. Thank you, Gary. Gary, we borrowed, we borrowed him from a heavy metal band at Wollongong. But, uh, he, he's going really well. He's toned it down a bit. Good on you, bit, Gary. Right. Well, announcements. And we have a fair few today. I'll try to go through them quickly. Um, they all appear in our um, weekly magazine, In Touch, which gets emailed to regulars, or there are copies available in paper if you don't have um, computing facilities at home just on the um, front table as you come in. But because it's the beginning of the new year, well, lots of things are restarting. And I'd like to mention, first of all, um, we are giving notice there is going to be a congregational meeting, that's for everybody, and that's uh, in two weeks' time after the church service, after morning tea, on the 5th of February. And the purpose of that is for Gary, our pastor, to share his vision for the future development of our church and our engagement with Christ's mission and our place in the wider community. Really important that we're there. That'll be great. Um, we have... Uh, adult fellowship meeting is starting back again for the year and that'll be on Wednesday the 8th of February at 1.30. We also have Christian meditation in the chapel starting, well it's, we've had our first um, and it will be on again in our chapel here at 9.15 on the 23rd of February, that's a Thursday. Just mentioned too now, Christmas lights are still fairly much in our thoughts, <laughs> uh, those that we've been involved as well too, and it was a wonderful time. But the, there's going to be, um, to celebrate the success of the lights and just really to say thank you to everyone that was involved, there's going to be a thank you dinner on Saturday the 25th from 7 o'clock, starting to eat at 6.30 and finishing at 9. So that's with everyone, everyone who helped set up lights, craft makers, anyone that worked on the stalls, entertainment, or behind the scenes, you're very welcome to come and join us as we give thanks to God for that. 
Um, briefly, we also have um, conversations as a group starting up on Monday the 6th of February, just to drop in, have a cup of coffee, have a chat to somebody just in our foyer out here, well, in our patio area out here from 10 to 12. And we'd love to see you there if you're um, able to make it. And also, if you do want to have a look at the church's audit, um, the copies of the audit of the financial accounts are available in the office for anyone who may choose to read it. Now, I'm, ah, I'll be in trouble if I don't mention this last one, which is, I know we forget, I forget constantly, but as you come into the foyer, there are like um, a mail stand where it's like, yeah, where you might put magazines or whatever, but it's got letters and it's got letters that are related to your surname. So there's mail that's been popped there and some people probably have walked past it for weeks and weeks and weeks not knowing either it was there or else um, just forgetting, easy to do. But just have another little look as you file out today and have a check that the, you've been able to pick up the information that might be there for you. Great, thank you for that. Well, now we're going to, um, to go into a time of prayer of confession. So as we quieten our minds, we'll just um, draw close to God again and just um, speak to him about our lives and, and thank him for what he's done for us. Let's pray. Dear Lord, how grateful we are to you that you accept us just as we are, with all our flaws and imperfections, as well as our God-given strengths. Thank you for the ongoing guidance and encouragement of the Holy Spirit, who is in the process of making us more and more like you. We're sorry for the times that we fail and make choices that do not honour you. We thank you for the blessing of your unconditional love and the knowledge that we are forgiven of our sins by Jesus' death for us. Thank you for the depth of your love towards us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Right, now, we are going to have a children's time now. So anyone who, any children that are in the um, congregation that would like to come up and just maybe sit down on the front steps here, they're very welcome. Uh, we'd love to see you. Um, just mention, too, that this service is being streamed, so if there's any parents that choose not to have their children back of their heads or whatever streaming, then um, just be aware of that and keep your children with you if you want to. But um, I'll just go and get myself organised and I'll see you down there in a moment. didn't want to put the water too close to my feet over there, because guess what I would probably do? Knock it over. <laughs> now, what I'd like to say is we're going to think about two words in particular today, okay? Now, um, I think you will know them. Some of you are only fairly little, but the older ones among you will know these words. And they're words that are sort of like the opposite of each other. Now. Some people can read and some people can't yet, but the first one is a word. Can anyone read that for me? What's that? Selfish. Well done, darling. It says selfish. Do you know what selfish means? Greedy and greedy and greedy. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's right. Wanting everything for yourself? Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. okay, that's a good one. And, um, some other people think of the word selfish as meaning things like, I want everything first. I want everything that I want. I want to come first. The rest of you, well, you can come wherever, but I want to come first all the time. Okay. It's the same thing as greedy and, and, um, and there's another word which is different. We don't always use this word a lot. Is someone else able to read this word? Great. Gee, you guys are good readers. It's humble. And humble's sort of the opposite. So if greedy... Like not selfish, like mean that, like not selfish. Means not selfish. Spot on. It means not selfish. So it's the opposite. So instead of wanting you to be first, 
you let other people be first, right? So we might get a volunteer, we need two. I've got a black pen here. And I want the one that God teaches in his word that he wants us to be like, gets a tick. And the one in the box that he does not want us to be like, gets a cross. Do we have two volunteers, to, one person to tick and one person to cross? You, okay, looks like we have two volunteers already. Now, you've got to look at that word carefully and work out whether you're going to put a, a tick or a cross on that one. The first one is selfish. Wow, thank you. Does everyone else agree with that? We've got a, a cross on the selfish. Okay. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Good work. And the second one, which is humble, has got a nice big tick on it. That is really good. Now... One last little sort of, it's not really an experiment, but it's sort of a little bit. Now, I need you to use your imaginations, right? This, what is this really? A glass? Nothing different about it, it's just an ordinary glass. But what's inside the glass? Yeah, there is colour, we can see colour. What are the little molecules and stuff that are right inside? What do you think this glass would be full of? Air. Air, right. You're just jumping ahead of yourself a little bit. It is full of air at the moment. Now, I want you just to pretend that the air in this glass is like someone that's absolutely full of selfish. So the air is the selfish part of us. The water in here is the humble part of us. Okay. So how am I going to change from being selfish to humble? How do I get out of that air, get that air out and get some water in there? Yeah, so how can I get water in here? Because if I take the air, if I put some water in here, have a look and see what happens. Now, is there as much air in there as there was before? No. Nope, there's not, because some of that air's gone and it's been replaced by the water. Okay? So how would I get to be as humble as I could? How I get rid of all the rest of that air? Um, fill it up all on the tip. Fill the whole cup up. That's right, and that's what you said too, wasn't it? Fill it right up to the very top. And that's really what God does in our life. If we let him, he helps to get rid of the selfish in us through the power of the Holy Spirit and helps us to get more and more humble so that... Oh, we're going further. <laughs> so that instead of us wanting to always put ourselves first, we're happy to be able to put other people first. Good work, guys. Now, if you'd like to just stay here for a moment, I'm going to have a quick mouthful so I don't spill it. I hope that wasn't too long since we... Anyway, and now we're going to pray for you before you go back and just... Um, because you guys are very, very precious to us as our children of our congregation. We'll pray for you and any other children that are either here or who are watching as well. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for these beautiful children and thank you that your heart is full of love for them. Thank you for what they mean to their families and to us. And we pray that you'll continue to guide them throughout the rest of their life, teaching them how it is that they can put other people first before themselves and learn how to become more humble in their lives, just as we need to learn that as well too, Lord. So thank you again for them, and please keep them safe and loved. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for your participation. And I'll let you now go back to your families, okay? Thank you. Well done. Quickly put these away before whoever else comes up next <laughs> has a little accident.
Okay. Thanks very much. Now we are now as we um, think about God and our response to him, we'll now be um, giving ourselves the time to have our offering taken up as well. So those who are um, acting as ushers today, if they wouldn't mind starting to collect the offering for us. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, you have given us everything we have, both material possessions plus our relationships with other people and our emotional needs. We're very grateful for what you've given us and would like to give back to you just a part of your generous gifts to us. Please accept them and use them to be productive in building your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. To be like to stand and we're going to be singing our next song which is he is my everything he is my all
we're now going to hear from Venice, who will be bringing us prayers for uh, the world and for others, and then followed by um, Margaret, who will um, be giving us our Bible reading. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Would you join me in prayer, please? Our God, our God, we are so fortunate and so lucky to be able to call him our God. He is so awesome and, as we said, just so wonderful. And we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being able to be called your family. And Father, knowing that we can do this, we can talk to you as a child to a father. When we bring to your attention the troubles of the world, the unrest, the anger, the greed, and you know about it, we know that. But we ask that these people let go of those feelings and be peaceful in their hearts and minds, and that the leaders of those countries be understanding of you and what you want from the people of your world. You want love, and peace and harmony for each other. We think of those who are in pain, for those who are grieving, who've lost loved ones. We ask that you help them and strengthen them and that they may feel your complete and utter love. We think of those who are searching for you and not realizing for those that do not believe in you. Your invitation is, oh, taste and see, and then they will realize that their life is utterly complete. We think of those at home who are lonely and are wanting companionship, comfort them, and may we find some way to reach out to them in love and companionship. And for this congregation, Father, your people, this is your house. We come here and we share fellowship and we share love. But may we reach out to each other beyond today and may we be open in our hearts and minds to change and welcome new things into our life and our worship. And we think of our dear ones here who belong to with this congregation, to you, Father. A Kathy Gear is in hospital. She's having tests for her heart. We ask you to place your healing hand upon her and that she may feel our prayers of love and our hugs going out to her. And Father, we thank you so much for your love, for your guidance, for your compassion, for your care. We thank you most of all for the gift of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, as we come to this time where we hear your word for us today, open our ears and our minds, open our hearts, that as we hear your word, strengthen us. We pray, Lord, that you would strengthen and lift Reverend Gary as he brings your message to us today. Hear us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 
The reading today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 to 18. And it's entitled, Divisions in the Church. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you should be in agreement and that there should be no divisions among you, but that you should be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrelling among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptised in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptised none of you except for Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptised in my name. I did baptise also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptised anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptise, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with elegant wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This is the word of the Lord. G'day. G'day. How you doing? All right. Yeah, it was a bit of fun playing drums. I'm just waiting for the electric guitars now. That's the next. And then we can get some people on their knees doing some lead breaks. Uh, no? No? Yeah? Uh, okay. All right. Um, yes, we've got to be careful. <laughs> we don't want to get too rowdy. People out there might hear us. Um, <laughs> I just want to make an announcement first. I've chosen uh, to do every Wednesday. Thanks for that. <laughs> every Wednesday. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, every Wednesday, I'm going to do a um, visitation day. And I want people to go and see Hazel each week and get a time on Wednesday when you want me to come and visit. This is not just a pastoral thing. This is just a visitation, have a chat, get to know each other, all right? And it's for anybody. Uh, and if, if we need to, I'll meet at coffee shops. If uh, we can meet at a coffee shop, if it's not appropriate to meet at your house. It, or Hazel will come with me to the house and we can meet. So there's all sorts of options. You've got no excuse not to be able to meet with me, OK? And I, I want to set Wednesdays aside to do that. And uh, if there's a need for pastoral care beyond that, I will talk to the pastoral care team and they will then follow up if there's a need. But I just want to have a, come and have a, coffee, a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, glass of water in a lot of cases, and no biscuits, okay, cake, no cake. I'm just pleasing my wife here. Um, uh, no, a little bit of fruit might be good. Uh, <laughs> I've got to stay healthy. Celery and carrots. Celery and carrots, oh, thanks. <laughs> okay, so um, think about that. Every Sunday, you go and make an appointment for me, and, and um, Hazel will take appointments and she will send, give them to me and I will follow them up on Wednesdays, okay? Yes. Hazel's up the back. 
up there. See there, it's Hazel. Yeah, okay, so you just need to go up the back there at the end of the service and just say, look, I'd like to have Gary come around and uh, or would like to meet with him and have a cuppa, all right? And uh, she'll put her appointment time down so that I don't sort of double up and all that. And I'm really opening this for everybody to do. I think it's important. It doesn't matter. It's not about having a problem and you want some, a minister to come and see you. It's about just getting to know each other as a family. And I need to do that. I need to get to know each other. Can you bring a snare drum? Snare drum. Only when I go to your place, all right? Yeah. But... Uh, so that's, that's an opening for you to, to uh, have a look and I hope that plenty of people book up times because I think it's good to be able to get around and, and have a chat. So, so do that. This message today, yes, yeah, some of it's about division in the church. Some of it's about who Jesus Christ is and some of it's about being baptised in Christ and not people. And not even, it's not even being baptised into the Uniting Church. It's not baptising into anything other than Christ. Because we do get carried away sometimes. And uh, baptism is something that's between us and God. And uh, yes, the person who baptises you is working on behalf of God in the sense to baptise you in that, in that name. But like Paul says... He's bound for the gospel. What is the gospel of Jesus Christ? Come on. What is the gospel? Tell me what the gospel is, someone. Sorry? Yeah. The good news. And how do we have good news? Turn the TV on at 6 o'clock. Is that good news? Hey? Jesus Christ is good news. <laughs> Don't follow Gary. Follow Jesus. And anyway, I, I just think that the gospel of Jesus Christ has got to be followed. Now, how do we do that? And this is the battle we have constantly, isn't it? How do we follow Jesus Christ? Well, we need to read what he has done. We need to pray to him. We need to... See the, you know, I've always had this thing in my life that I often use, sometimes I don't because I'm a human and I'm slack sometimes. But often I'll say, what would Jesus do in a situation? What would Jesus do? Oh, gee, that could get me into all sorts of, sorts of trouble, couldn't it? You know, Jesus could do something that quite contrary to me or you. But that's what Jesus would do. And we need to think, what would he do? That's following Jesus. The gospel of Jesus Christ is about following Jesus, repenting from your sins, acknowledging that the cross that he died on, he did that for us. But you've got to recognise the resurrection where he conquers death. He conquers the evil one. And because of that, we have life everlasting. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said, go into all the world, preach the gospel and make disciples. Making disciples is another thing, isn't it? He didn't say make Christians. That's God's job. God does the Christian thing. He does the organising of that. The Holy Spirit left here for that. But we're to disciple people. The only way you can disciple someone is have some sort of relationship and actually sit with them and actually go through things. Discipleship is something that's not easy because you've actually got to spend time with them. What we talked about this morning with the kids is about being humble and following Jesus. Sometimes we've got to give up our selfishness and be humble. Our selfishness has got to go out the door because... Saturday afternoon when you want to watch the footy, you've got to go and see somebody because they need help or they need support or you need to disciple them. And you've got to give up your footy. You know? You've got to give up things sometimes to follow Jesus. The young rich ruler said, I follow every command you do, Jesus. 
And Jesus said, that's great. I'm really pleased that you follow everything I do. Okay, go and sell up everything and come and follow me. And the rich young ruler says, hang on, what, 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 hang on, what was that? Sell, sell everything, get what? How, how, oh, hang on, I've got a bit too much there to sell. I don't want to give up everything. Jesus wants us to give up everything and hand our life over to him. I'm not saying go out and sell everything you got. But that God, if God wants you to do that, you do it. What I'm saying is you've got to give your heart to him. Everything in your heart. The vision in the church comes down to relationships. And it talks about another gospel. I often have, over the years, talked and thought about these other gospels. They creep into the church and they're things that take away the divinity of Christ. You know what that means? It means that they take away that Christ is God. And when it does that, we have problems because we're now looking at a different gospel. We're not looking at a gospel where God came to this earth, became flesh and lived amongst us. We're now looking at God being up there in heaven and Jesus being just a man and did some good things. And that's a different gospel. That's not a gospel of hope and faith. There's been lots of good people do lots of good things in this world. But none of them have done what Jesus has done. They've take, put their life on the line, died and rose again from the dead, and today sends his spirit so that he can live with us. We need to commit our lives to him and follow Jesus, like I said in the beginning. Following Jesus is following the gospel of the Lord. We need to constantly repent. How often do you repent from your sins? How often do you say to God, look, I'm sorry, I've blown it again. Wake up in the morning and go, ah, oh, okay, Lord. Yeah, that was a pretty bad day yesterday, wasn't it? Have a chat to him. He likes to talk to us. If he's your friend, you talk to him. If he's not your friend, don't talk to him. When you have friends, you talk to them, don't you? That's one of the things we do. These days, you don't talk half the time. It's all on phone going... Look, I've seen my kids, as they grew up, sitting on the couch together doing this. Not talking, but... Bang, bang, bang to each other. I'm thinking, what are you doing? Just talk. You know, no, 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 they've got to go on here and flick and then go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? And they're sitting right next to each other. Really? That, that, it, it gets you, doesn't it, eh? We have to talk to each other because Jesus doesn't have a mobile phone. I'm sorry. He doesn't have a phone you can text or email. Okay? So we need to talk. He gave us a vocal cord so that we can talk. He gave us thoughts so we can have speech, even if we don't actually volume it out. We can talk to God. He invented the computer, God did. They've only just tried to fix it up to make it work in a machine. Our brain is much more sophisticated than a computer. And uh, we have God who created that. Now, we need to communicate with God regularly. Say we're sorry. Hand over some of your things and say, look, Lord, I've got all these things on my plate. Can you help me? What do I do here, Lord? Which way should I go? I have to do it all the time because things happen in the church and we've got to, I've got to go, well, what do I do here? I know what I'd like to do sometimes, <laughs> but you can't just do that. You've got to be wanting to do what God wants. 
Otherwise, I'll be doing heaps and heaps of repenting. <laughs> Go out, do what you're going to do, and then repent, 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 on your knees. But trouble is, consequences come out of it, and we don't like consequences. We need to think about this following Jesus bit. If we want to be a church that's not divided... If we want to be a church that loves everybody in the church, not just some, and let's not put people aside and say, well, that, that group of people I don't like or those people I don't, don't get on with. We don't want to be a church that puts people in boxes. I've been put in a box that many times by people, not just here, but everywhere. Oh, he's that bikey fella, or he's that, you know... He's got that beard and long hair and all that. It doesn't really fit. You know? I remember going to one of those big assembly executive meetings. You know, like, everyone's in suits and ties and all this stuff. And I wandered in and, they all looked, are you in the right place, sir? <laughs> I said, yeah, I am. I'm in the right place. Why? And they said, oh, well, this is an executive meeting. I said, yeah, I'm on the executive. Oh, oh. You know, we've got to make sure that we don't box people up. We've got to make sure that we can forgive people. Forgiveness. Everybody can change. We can all do things differently. We can have experiences in our life where we make mistakes. But do you think we can change? Of course we can. Things can change. People can change. God can change us. Allow him to do that. Let's not be a divided church, but be a church of common interest. Let's be a church that wants to go forward in our community. Let's support each other. Like I said last week, say something good to someone. You've got to do it all the time. Do it this week again, after church. Say something good to someone. You always find negatives, they're easy to find. Try and find something nice to say. Because you know what, that encourages people, <coughs> builds people up. And that's what we want to do as a church. That's called discipleship. As we build each other up. But firstly, you need to get to know God. And if you don't know God today, we'll be praying out the front here after because I want people to come and know God in a real way. Have an experience with God, not just a, a thing like, oh, yeah, I go to church and I'm doing this. I want you to experience what God is like in a real way. Let's not be a church of people that just go and do the functions. Let's be a church that functions for Jesus. Amen? Amen? Yeah, good. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give ourselves to you. It's not easy sometimes to forgive. It's not easy sometimes to reconcile. It's not easy sometimes to say something nice to someone. But help us, Lord, to do that. Help us to come to you with our problems and our sins and our griefs. And be with us each day as we get up in the morning, as we go to work or whatever we do. Help us, Lord, to keep our focus on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, where's that microphone? Sing our final song. It's an old favourite hymn. Just a closer walk with thee. It's very important. This two, one, two. But let us uh, stand and and join in for
Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. Let's see. Really bell it out, right? Yeah, just the closer walk with me. So let's walk around the room a bit. Walk around the room. Ride with Jesus is my plea. Come on. Daily walking close to me. Jesus that counts. If we don't walk with Jesus, we don't follow him, we're going to end up in the trap of the world. The world's going to soak us up. It's going to bind us up. It's going to take us and chew us up. We need to follow Jesus. We need to walk with him. It's so much better to walk with Jesus. So let us sing this last chorus again. Ready? Nice and loud. Just a closer walk with me. Just a closer walk. Yeah. Just a closer walk. And me, Jesus, is my plea. Ready? Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord. That last line again. Jesus a clap. Lord, we want to bless everyone here. We just want to say, Lord, that we're going to go into this week following you. We want to walk with you all week. So, Lord, help us to do that. Let's enjoy being in your company as we go into this next week. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't forget morning tea.